Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. This is the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. We do this just for you. We do it live from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it is then recorded so that you can watch it throughout the week. It shows up on our website, thebibleforum.net, in the bottom right-hand corner in the, in the screen down there, or you can go to the uh, YouTube page and look at stuff going back, I don't know how many years, uh, pick a topic. We've probably talked about it. Tonight I want to ask you a question. Are you overly committed to the Bible? I reported to you last week that megachurch pastor and son of Charles Stanley, uh, Andy Stanley by name, says that Christian leaders need to get the spotlight off the Bible. Now Andy may think he's come up with some unique idea and an and interesting way to express it, but he really has not. It's the same old emergent, emerging talk that's been going on with these kinds of people for the last 20 years. For instance, Biola University professor J.P. Moreland once said that evangelical Christians are too committed to the Bible. He went on to say, quote, in the actual practices of the evangelical community in North America, there is an overcommitment to Scripture in a way that is false, irrational, and harmful to the cause of Christ. Can you imagine a Christian saying words like that? He's part of Biola University, Bible Institute of Los Angeles. I read this past week an article, and in the course of that, they praised Biola University as a conservative evangelical school. Biola hasn't been a conservative evangelical school for most of my lifetime. Here is proof. He goes on to say, quote, and it has produced a mean spiritedness among the overcommitted that is grotesque and often ignorant distortion of discipleship unto the Lord Jesus. The problem, he said, is the idea that the Bible is the sole source of knowledge of God, morality, and a host of related important items. Accordingly, he says, the Bible is taken to be the sole authority of faith and practice. My friends, there is not a conservative, biblically-based church or religious organization with a doctrinal statement making a comment about the Word of God, the Bible, that doesn't use just those words. That it is the sole authority for faith and practice. These men want to do away with that. But just like Stanley's statement is not going to upset most Christians, and certainly isn't going to ruffle any Christian leader feathers, Moreland's absurd comments didn't ruffle anything either. In fact, he's still a major influential voice in evangelical Christianity. Why? Because evangelical Christianity has changed. The term remains, but the definitions are totally different. Let me give you an illustration. Trey Pearson is a musical performer with a group called Everyday Sunday. He was invited to perform at a major Christian music festival. It was to be held last month, August 2016. When it was announced, a significant number of the production team threatened to quit. So Trey was disinvited. However, several bands, who were also invited, were disturbed by this public snub of an LGBT person. I didn't know that. Maybe you didn't know that. But Trey Pearson is a homosexual, or at least a transgender, or something in that category. A Christian, LGBT person. Anyway, so one of the bands, something called Five Iron Frenzy, uh, that sounds Christian, doesn't it? invited Pearson on stage to perform their last song at Joshua Fest. According to reports, attendees were crying at the show of solidarity. 
The author of this piece highlighted what he said were at least three truths about American Christianity and LGBT issues. Number one, he said traditionalists are still a force with which to reckon. Progressive Christians often speak about Christians with a traditional stance on same-sex issues like a dying minority on life support. While most Christian groups are becoming more accepting of homosexuality, traditionalists still compromise roughly half or comprise roughly half of all Christians. Who are traditionalists? People who read a word in a book, a word that's spelled, I don't know, U-P, and believe that it's talking about something over their head. That's a traditionalist who believes that if a sign says S-T-O-P, you ought to. These other people are not traditionalists, and therefore, nothing means what it seems to mean. The traditionalists apparently are the problem. Secondly, traditionalists' resistance is mostly rooted in conviction, not hatred. Now, that's a a good thought. That's a, an honest and a right concept. More progressives disagree every day. They are a growing number. Christian resistance to LGBT relationships and marriage becomes more strident, more entrenched, but it's not because of red-eyed rage and hatred. Now there are exceptions, but they're exceptions. They're not the rule. Most Christians, the Christians who are against the LGBT freedoms, do that out of love. They do that out of respect. They do that out of a sense of caring not just for the individuals whose lives are being destroyed by this, but for for the culture and for coming generations and the reputation of God. Theirs is a very positive statement. It's the LGBT crowd that turns it into something ugly. Thirdly, LGBT Christians, he says, finally have a seat at the table. At the turn of the 21st century, gay Christian, as a phrase, was considered by many believers to be an oxymoron. Even LGBT people who were committed to celibacy were often shunned. At many churches, if you were gay, you were gone. But much has changed in America among the faithful. Now, it's clear that we we now have moved beyond the point where LGBT people are persona non grata in most Christian communities. Many prominent conservative <clears throat> congregations now welcome LGBT people to attend, worship, and even serve. Christian publishers have started publishing books by gay Christians and pro-LGBT advocates, and many Christian musicians are pushing for LGBT inclusion in their industry. Christian pastors, theologians, ethicists, leaders, and even longtime editor-in-chief of Christianity Today, David Neff, have become open and affirming, so LGBT Christians finally have a seat at the table. What does all that mean? It means an increasing number of professing Christians either aren't really Christians or they have no biblical base. What guides you as a Christian through life? The culture or the Word of God? What drives you inside? Opinion or the Spirit of God that is in you, both the will and to do according to God's good pleasure? The reality here is that any overt, red-eyed, raged, or hatred toward homosexuals or anyone 
is totally contrary to Christian values. The real issues in our churches is not the values a person brings to the table, but the way in which they present them. People come to church hiding all sorts of sinful things. Attitudes, prejudices, addictions, you name it. They don't come with a sign that says, I'm an adulterer. But they come as adulterers, don't they? Or thieves, murderers hateful people of all sorts, having done all kinds of terrible things, and they are all welcome. Now, should they begin to spread their values around, should they begin to seek influence in others that those others would follow their patterns, if they work to make their differences a major source of contention, they become problems. Anybody like that would be a problem. It doesn't have to mean sexuality. They just have a fiery temper that shows up in business meetings. Time out. Not happening. Not going to happen. It's not tolerated. Not in church. It's not tolerated in your business. Somebody comes in, happy to be part of your business. Once they're there and entrenched, they start to change everything. No, no, no. And it doesn't work in any social or political environment either. And Christianity is not unique in any of this. Pearson goes on to say, if current trends persist, the dominant majority of Christians will be LGBT affirming in the near future. Perhaps we are approaching a day when a traditionalist Christian musician will be rejected from a mainstream stage because they are considered immoral. And that's what's going on in our culture. It is a massive effort to change everything no one group is doing that. No one person. No amalgamation of people or groups is doing that. This is something that's being orchestrated outside of our system. This is demonic. That's a bold statement. How do you say that? What do you mean? What you... Nothing like this could be successful, as successful as it's been, and it not come with the power of the evil one. It is counterproductive on every level. It makes no sense. It is upside down, inside out, and backwards from everything any human being knows, does, or believes. Why are so many people either engaged in it, sympathetic toward it, and throwing rocks at people who say, no, no, the sky's not falling, chicken little, no, no, the emperor has no clothes. They're the problems, aren't they? You know anybody like that? You're looking at one, and I'm looking at you. <laughs>